Okay, so while we are waiting for the uh, varnish to dry, we are going to go in here and we're going to go ahead and assemble our fuselage for this airplane. So, first of all, we'll go ahead and assemble the fuselage core. So I want my timer over on the right side of the airplane, so I'm going to put this um, closed up panel, sorry, on the left side of the airplane, so I'm going to put this one on the right side. Try to line things up as best as you can here. You'll be able to go back and sand everything nice and round later. Okay, so once you have um, got the fuselage half, uh, you know, one of the panels installed, you're going to take this little incident screw, and we're going to screw it straight in here into um, the little notch right, uh, right there. And what you'll want to do to start with is just screw it in all the way. And so it's now recessed down in there, and then you can raise, and, uh, raise it out uh, to get the necessary incidents to make the airplane fly happily. Now, I'm going to do a sidebar here, which is I want a removable wing on this airplane because uh, it has to travel with me. So I'm going to pop out some drill bits here. We've got uh, some blind nuts. And we're going to drill this uh, this airplane, um, the, the wing and the fuselage for that. So what I want to do is line up my various marks to get my wing centered. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and drill through the bottom here. So I want one of these holes not super far back. I still want the wing to have some meat at that location. Let's see if I can get one of these to receive that. There we go. Do this in an easier way. And then up front, you can kind of pick where you want to do this. I'm going to actually stick my blind nut, I think right about here. I think that's, no, I want it right here. I'm going to put it close to the high point. And what that's going to require me to do is drill all the way through the bottom to be able to get to this. And have to drill up into the wing. So again, we're lining up this wing. We have a laser cut mark here and here for the center. If you're doing the sweep at 28, you'll just line up the um, um, dihedral join, and that's it. We want to hold this very carefully as we're doing this. You just drill up until you feel the bit about to come through. Just squeeze. 
boring it there. So now that we've got those holes drilled. Okay, so we have gone ahead and we've drilled through the wing here. So we've got those two holes set up. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these blind nuts in. I do want to recess this one so it's not arguing with my tail boom any. Very dull exacto blade. Oh well. So we'll go ahead and glue this guy. Now our second blind nut is going to be a little harder because we've got, got to actually cut in here um, to be able to position it. And basically what I'm trying to do is just hog out material to make space for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drive this bolt in here enough to catch that guy. And once I feel like it's starting to catch the threads, um, which it has now, what I'm basically going to do is squirt glue in here. Cinching this guy down somewhat. Right. That looks good. So we will hit that with where my accelerator went. Actually, before I do that, I want to try and shove it up somewhat. Because these 256 bolts I've got are fairly short. I want to make sure the threads are actually going to go through and catch. Alright, so we'll do a test fit of the wing with the bolts. And then we'll close it all up. And in 
indeed locks in absolutely fabulously. We already know that the rear one's going to work. And yeah, there we go. So you see, I didn't even screw that one down all the way. Uh, you are going to want to put some sort of reinforcing on top of the wing um, so that those bolts don't crush into it. But there we go. We'll go ahead and score some CA accelerator in that part just to make sure it stays put. And now, what we'll do can't put CA or put CA down there now because it'll harden immediately. So we'll do everything else and then we'll come in here and basically I need glue in that area. And so our goal is to just get everything lined up and bingo like it was made for it or something and so there's our forward fuselage pod all assembled with removable wing uh, mount A little bit of CA squirted up inside there. So sand everything on this nice and round and then we'll come back. So we've sanded this nice and round. I've gotten sanding dust and crud all in my wing so it looks ugly because the varnish still is not dry. What I'm going to do is go over my uh, wing mount holes here. And I'm going to put um, some 164 plywood reinforcing plates on them. Again, this is all optional. Um, we'll probably include the hardware for it, but like I said, it's not part of the intended build setup. And the removable wing mount, uh, though, is more or less based on how Lee did his uh, for back in the days when he was still traveling overseas for contests and whatnot. Moving on back to our fuselage, we've rounded everything off. We've got our dethermalizer timer up here that we are going to want to countersink in there part way. It's fitting a little tightly yet.
here that I have it got somewhat stuck. Not my intent at all. There we go, starting to come back out. So what we're going to do is we've got this plug that's uh, basically made from the scrap from when we make these fuselages. I'm going to cut it um, so that it recesses down in here and gives me a seat. It's about a uh, sixteenth of an inch down in there. And that will give me enough spacing uh, so that not too much of my timer is sticking out in the breeze looking to get snagged on stuff. And, you know, not look, it just makes it look, look better. And all that. One of these still has glue in it. And so we'll drop that guy down in there. And now we'll put more glue. sink our timer down in there so it seats correctly as you can see only the necessary parts are exposed I've got enough clearance for everything to swing around next take these um, little wire hoops right here and you're going to stick the so the the holes here are staggered um, although it's not hugely important but may have to clean those out with something, those holes out with something or whatever. Um, I got glue in mine. Let's see. The top ones over here. Yeah, so I'm going to squirt glue on that. Let's just shove this wire in here. And leave it with just about that much sticking out right there. Go over to the other side, do the same thing. Another thing that's a good idea to do at this time is to take this little hook right here and you're going to drive in it in about the halfway mark of the wing just like that so it's facing so it can be pulled back so the rubber band can be pulled back in it. And there we go. All done on that part. Next thing you're going to want to do is start sanding this basswood part. We want a concavity in it. You can wrap some sandpaper around your carbon boom. Sorry for the interruption there. Uh, what I was doing, um, I'll go ahead and show you. I'm mostly done with it. But basically, I've got this wrapped around here, sanding in, and that gives us this nice concave shape. So now what we're going to do, we're going to measure back on here. And so right around where that hole is, we take sandpaper and we'll rough up the top of my tail loom. Just like that, give me a nice gluing surface. Now, what I need to do is determine, I need to lay this down like so, in that direction. So this shallow slope part going back. And I want to glue this on so that the front of my tail boom kind of lines up with the end of the slot. I don't want it far enough that it's going to hit it but I want it to come past the end where I've got these notches, but not hit the end. And so what I'm going to do 
squirt glue on my basswood pivot here. And we'll line this up again. side to side. There we go. Now, before I even tried hard enough to glue or anything, remember this peculiar looking hook here. The way that mounts is it goes back here. Now, mine is overbent a little bit. Contrary to the calculations I ran. I play with it as needed to get it to mount like this. So it goes back onto the tail boom. going on in the background this is my daily life I don't know where I put my spider wire so I'll have to go chase now we've got spider wire here and so what I'm doing is I'm binding all of this entire assemblage together Squirt some more glue in from the one that actually has glue in it. Don't throw that uh, spider wire away because we're not done with it. But we are ready to go ahead slide in our wing, or, or sorry, our pivot assembly here. We'll find where that line nut went. may require a little bit of working in here. Um, the actual pivot is already set up correctly, but we need the part on the fuselage a little bit tight.
So we've got the pivot assembly done here. This is a uh, uh, lock nut, so that should stay fairly well for you. You know, tighten it up as needed. Uh, but here we go. So next, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put the wing back on uh, because we need it in place to route our dethermalizer equipment. down until it seats completely because we do actually need it completely seated to do this. There we go. Everything's nice and straight. So find that piece of spider wire that we have. And what we're going to do with the spider wire is we're going to go on the opposite side of the fuselage from the timer. So my timer is on my left side, so I'm going to the right side here. I'm going to thread this through, and I'm going to tie an actual fishing knot here. And the reason for that is this stuff is slippery and likes to go everywhere. Plus, I have glue literally all over my hands. Right. And so we'll trim off our excess here. And now what we can do is we'll loop this across the tail boom through the eyelet on the other side. And so we're going front to back on this one. Now, I've got my notch back here that I never did clear out completely. So now's a good time to do that. And it still had a little bit of glass cloth over it. So now we can loop that through there, and it comes up front. So what I want to do is I want to have the string end right about here. Uh, right a beam, basically a beam where my hook is. So I'm going to loop that around. I'm just going to tie a granny knot in here to um, just leave me a loop in the end. Now I've got a tidy little, let me show you, get a tidy little loop in the end of the line here. I'm going to take some more of my line and I'm going to tie just a, a loop here. It doesn't need to be particularly large. With practice, you'll be able to experiment and decide what size you want this to actually be. But now I've got a literally just a loop of spider wire. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take some of that rubber, snip off a decent sized piece of it, I'm going to loop it through that. Loop, and then I'm going to find the other end here and we'll loop it through it too. I'm going to tie this extra big because we don't know what length it needs to be. But now, what we're going to do is we're going to string that all back up through here up front. You can see I've got.
some slack in the rubber band. So I want to take up that slack. Like so. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop that onto my arm here. I'm going to observe whether the arm's tracking around. And indeed the arm is slowly but surely tracking around. I'm actually going to tighten this up slightly. goes and click. I'll take some more of this rubber. Situation happening quite yet. It's kind of hanging up in there. And actually, I'm getting caught on something. That's why. So I'm going to sand the end of my carbon rod a little bit because it's too tight in there. It's not a carbon rod. It's a carbon tailwind. see that the timer comes around. Let's go. I still don't have quite enough tension. keep working with this until you're sure that this thing is going to come across let go eventually let's go I'm gonna burr on the end of that wire and timer's starting to come up actually got caught on something there I'm not sure what but anyway uh, that's about where you want it to be so now what we're going to do is we're going to close this all back up because we're ready to do the final part of our assembly. And that is to attach tail surfaces. A tilt is not really a good idea on uh, Y-tailed gliders, so we're not going to do any. What we're going to do is we're going to sand um, the top and the left side. Now, to put my stab on here, I'm not going to put it on straight. I'm going to tilt it this way a little bit, um, about 1 16th, off, 1 16th offset at the back. So you can basically put the front on here and then cock it over uh, the back over about 1 16th inch to the right. But we want no tilt relative to the wing. So one way to do that, make sure I found the right glue. which I have now closed up because of the fact that I was using a round CA accelerator.
put down my glue joint. I'm going to let you guys look down here. So I tilted it over to um, get my right skew. And you're wanting to look at this to make sure. tips are at the same elevation. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sight down to look at that as well. So what you're doing is you're sighting the tips off of where they come up on the wing to make sure they come up the same. And all's well except that I've lost that skew to the right, which is very important for making this thing easy to get a, a right turn established. tilt. Hit it with some accelerator. So now it's locked in. At this point I can track down wherever I left my rudder and my rudder is going to glue in like this and I want it straight up and down. squirt a little bit of extra glue in a few places. Maybe. Which one of these bottles is going to give me glue? Clearly not that one. This is empty. this to come off under the intense launch lobes that you see, because you see a lot of side lobes. So, the assembly of the airplane is now completed. That is a complete sweep at 28. Sweep at 30, sorry. Mm -hmm. I still want to get some of the ugly, disgusting smudges off my wing. I don't think they're going away anytime soon, though. But I can at least feel good about myself for trying. If anything, I'm making it worse. Um, Alright, so the glider is structurally done, we just need to balance it. There are two little marks that are laser cut into the wing, and those are your CG marks. And currently, the airplane is balancing way back, uh, right about there. So it needs to come forward to right here. So I'm going to take some of that, that lead. I expect to use a fair amount of it. Let's 
ECG, and it's almost there. So that's going to fall out. That's okay. All right, so I just need a little bit more of that. I think this is going to be too much, which is good because it barely fits in the nose anyway. So what does that got me? That's got me. Actually, right where I need to be. So I'm going to go get a pair of pliers. I'm going to squish this down some, and then we'll um, attach it more permanently. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to crimp this down a little bit. I'm going to try to squish it some up at the front. And there we go. And you can tape this in place for the time being or, or glue it your, um, your choice. I'm going to go ahead and glue it. It's actually not that hard to pry it back out. One of you guys have got to give me some glue though. And there we go. CG once again. Right on the money. Alright, this has been the build video for the Sweep at 28 and Sweep at 30 Discus Launch 3 Flight Gliders designed by Lee Hines, produced by JMH Aerospace. Thank you for watching. Uh, there will be a trimming video um, for, for this airplane where we'll introduce how to trim, uh, some of the basics of how to trim these airplanes. I'm going to go ahead and, and tell you, while I know how to trim these for decent performance, I am not like the expert on this topic so you should go and read up uh, anything you can find by Stan Budenbaum, um, Lee Hines, etc. on this topic. Uh, Hip Pocket Aeronautics uh, Forum has some information on these topics. Uh, there's a little bit even in indoor news and views so, so check out those resources because they're they are greater authorities. A lot of those guys have set records with these airplanes. I have not. Um, I just like chucking them around having fun and occasionally competing with them. Um, so we've been through a, a fairly complete build. I'll show you how to modify the airplane for a removable wing, etc. Uh, questions, comments, put them in the comments section below. Uh, check this aircraft out on our website for, for purchase. Um, or check out the links for the free plan so you can build it from scratch. And hopefully we'll see you on the, field, the flying field. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm Josh Finn. This is Hope. We are J&H Aerospace. If you like this video, hit the like button. Also, how about subscribe to our channel and check out jhaerospace.com for new free flight products and all of the tooling that you'll need to build them. Thanks for watching.